Hey guys, Cannon from Nodemic here at Thamescon, and I'm here with the fantastic Lee Bradley. Lee, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you again. Hey, how are you feeling today? How's today gone for you so far? Uh, no, it's been a lot of fun. I've I've been sketching, doodling, and chatting to people. You have to bear with me because my brain <laughs> is very tired at this point. No worries, sir. No worries. So, for the other audience at home, would you like to tell them who you are and what do you do? I'm Lee Bradley. I'm a freelance artist. Um, I do a variety of things. I'm a penciler, inker, colorist. I work in comics. I do movie storyboards, uh, private commissions, all kinds of bits and pieces. Primarily superheroes, robots, Transformers, Spider-Man, uh, things of that vein. That's pretty cool to me. So what was your inspiration to get into this line of work? What made you decide that this is what you wanted to do? Um, that's a good question. I'm not even sure anymore. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's been a very long time. Um, I used to love reading comics when I was a kid. Okay. So I used to get the, the old Marvel uh, comics weekly when I was a kid. Sometimes they were black and white, and I suppose we didn't have much, so I'd have paper and pens, and I'd copy. That's how you originally start. You copy artwork. Um, and then just over the years, I kind of I kept an interest in it, and somehow, through some winding way, I've ended up here. Yeah, That's pretty cool. So... As you said a moment ago, you've worked for a very long time in this industry. What is your favourite thing that you've actually been asked to draw? Oh, <laughs> most of the time it's inappropriate stuff, but that's not. <laughs> but that's not. Um, <laughs> that's not generally seen in yeah, the industry. Course, that's more private commission. Should I, should I say uh, commercially drawn then? Okay, <laughs> um, that's, a, that's a good question as well. I, I think working on different stuff, one yeah. of the first things I got to do was the Transformers How to Draw Guide. Now, it was quite simplistic, but the fact of getting to work and get published on that comic was, was really cool. Um, and also doing the Spider-Man Eagle Moss work, getting to be a colorist on another artist at first, seeing my work in print, uh, being able to sneak in little things into the pictures, like pictures of me and my friends getting drunk on TV screens. We were dressed up as superheroes at the time, so it's kind of in the same vein. But you, you would, you'd be able to put little sneaks in and then you'd see it printed. Well, what is your favorite little Easter egg that you've hidden in a, in a drawing before? Um, oh, there's been various things, but the, there was one night out when me and my friends went out in cosplay okay. and we, we got quite wasted. <laughs> um, and then I managed to shrink it down onto this scene where Spider-Man was escaping a gallery, okay. and we, I put it in as the painting in the gallery, so it kept getting repeated on different pages. Oh, that's brilliant. But, but they noticed, it was the final time they noticed, and they blurred the whole image. But it, the, the fact that it was in there right before, that was kind of fun. <laughs> oh, like that. That's brilliant. So, as uh, an artist, I'm saying to any people out there who want to be artists, what would you say is sort of a good tip that they should do if they're looking to do this themselves as a career? It's not, not be unrealistic with your expectations. I think one of the things that people do is they think they can get a job immediately or that there's a, a glut of work. And a lot of people, because I do teaching as well, a lot of people just not at the level they need to be to be professional artists. There are some amazing people that are at the top of the game, but there's a lot of people that have got another decade of work ahead of them. It's the amount of time you put into it, the amount of years you take, the variety of things you draw, not trying to put style over substance, learning the basics, anatomy, structure, storytelling, a lot of that's missing with people. Um, getting all those elements together and never being happy with your work. If you're happy with your work, Sorry to yeah, I say, know, I know the feeling. if you're happy with your work, it means you're not progressing. Mm, no, that makes if sense. you're always finding faults with your work, it means you're going to see them fault and you want to change them and improve. With my work, I, I constantly see faults, which means when I look back at the work I, I started doing just over a decade ago when I was pu first published, that, that work I think is really quite poor, if I'm honest. But I'm glad because I compare it to what I'm producing now and oh, hopefully no, what I'll be producing 10 years from now. So with colouring, is there any like, tips to, you would give to them about that, how to improve their style? Uh, colouring? Well, that's, that, that's, or that's, illustration in general, maybe. No, I, I, well, with colouring, I would say experiment. experiment. Sometimes not using real colours, actually 
just sticking to two colour bias, just doing everything in red and yellow. Uh, almost like if you if you watch some really good art films, there's some fantastic films. One one of the things Marvel did well with the Netflix shows was the colour palette they used. They they structured it to two or three colours in many scenes, and it looked fantastic. The quality of the writing may not be that good, but the the visuals look fantastic. But a lot of that was the colour palette. Um, the second part of the question I've already forgotten. Well, just general illustration. General illustration is. It, it comes back to what I originally said. Yeah. Just practice and try and absorb as many different things as possible. Don't get stuck. Don't get stuck as one style. Um, it's like a lot of people I know that do anime type stuff or manga. They just draw one way and they don't learn some of the basics. So I would just say experiment as much as you can. Awesome. And finally, just to end off, is there any sort of links or anything you want to like push forward to our audience while you've got them watching? Yes. Um, 11th of August, uh -huh. Worcester, Worscon. Be there, £10 a ticket. Awesome. <laughs> It'll be great. We'll have a link to that down in the description below. Lee, thank you so much for talking to us today. And we will see you guys next time.